Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everyone. We are going to save you some money, especially if you filed an extension of your taxes this year. That deadline is coming up very soon. But even if you did, who doesn't want to save some money? By way of tax deductions, why give it to the government if you don't need to? <laughs> We're going to talk about that today and so much more. She is the woman behind TLJ Professional Services. It's all about your finances. If you're an individual, if you own a business, small, medium-sized businesses, she does accounting. Her company does accounting, bookkeeping, and of course, takes care of the tax situation. Tracy Tate is back with us. How are you doing today? I am wonderful. Thank you for having me, Steve. Oh, uh, wonderful to have you back here. Back. I this this excites me. Just knowing that there's little tricks, hints, tips, schemes, whatever you want to call it, that we can employ to to lower our our taxes. And a lot of this is just money out the window that we're not even aware of, right? Exactly. Exactly. I call it leaving money on the table. Um, mm. I'm happy to be here. I'm Tracy L. Tate, CEO of TLJ Professional Services. We say we're about all things financial. So um, we talked last week, actually, about some deductions. So I want to dive in more around those deductions because there's 10 that I give away as a free download um, at my website, tljprofessionalservices.com. But these are common ones that I see all the time. So I want to make sure people are aware, number one, the deadline. So people think that um, if they are a S corp or a single member um, of their business, that they have until October 15th. They do not. <laughs> if they are a S corp or a partnership, you're required to file those taxes by September 15th. So you have less than a month because you have to have time for your shareholders to get their tax documents, which is called a K-1 from the business return. And then you have the October 15th deadline for your personal return. Um, mm. And then if you are a single member LLC, which goes on your personal tax return, you actually do have until October 15th. But people oh. get uh, misunderstood when it comes to like the S Corp and the partnership returns. So um, LLC if you're paying quarterly taxes for your LLC, yes. isn't that September 15th? So the payment deadline is September 15th, not the filing. So your wow. filing, um, your automatic payments or your quarterly payments are applied for that tax year. So the September 15th deadline that you're talking about this year is actually for your 2024 really? tax, which is for next year. So if you filed an extension for 2023, you should have already did your prepayments, your quarterly prepayments as an LLC. So this hmm. one is for um, 2024. So just so I better understand it, and probably a lot of us, uh, <laughs> disclaimer, put it up there now, Steve is financially illiterate. Steve is financially <laughs> illiterate. I admit it. I'm a great creative guy. Numbers just... They don't do it for me. However, we got to be aware of what's going on here. So yeah. if you have an LLC, sole proprietor, right? You When you pay your quarterly tax payments, yes, you're paying for the current year, not based on what 2023 was, uh, the previous year? Correct. Correct. So let me um, put it in a context that's a little more clear. When you are a W-2 employee, you prepay taxes out of each paycheck. When you're self-employed, those quarterly prepayments are treated the same as if you were taking taxes out of your paycheck, okay? So it's for that current year. So a lot of people um, don't understand that if you don't pay your quarterly taxes and you don't have W-2 employment income, you will be penalized for not prepaying taxes. I have clients that like both ways. I have clients that's like, you know what? I don't want the government using my money. So I'll just pay the penalty for not paying quarterly, right? Um, but then there's others, of course, they want to get a refund. So you have to look at your quarterly payments are like your paycheck um, taxes that you pay. Right. It's a prepayment. So either you have enough taken out or you don't. And if you don't, you owe. 
And if you do, you could get a refund, right? So it's also strategy. Mm -hmm. I have clients that do both ways. They don't want the government using their money, but then I have clients that intentionally overpay so that they could get a large refund. And you could do a lot more with a lump sum of money than just a little bit of money per paycheck. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thanks for making that clear. Oof. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> deductions, what can we do here to save some money? So um, diving into a couple of more of deductions that I see people um, not take and leave money on the table is depreciation. So what people don't understand or amortization, um, an asset is what's depreciable. So people think that like if you finance a vehicle, for example, the whole payment, unless you're leasing it, is not a deduction, only the interest piece, because the rest is going toward principal. So when you are financing a vehicle, there's two ways to deduct expenses in your business. It's through depreciation and or the interest you pay on the loan. OK, um, and people don't don't understand you don't deduct the whole payment unless it's a lease payment because you're financing it and there's ownership. So depreciation has a lot to do with your assets. I see people just expense everything. It adds no value to your business if you don't add assets in your business. So assets are liquidable and can be converted to cash. It adds value to the health of your business. It adds value to the, the um, solvency of your business. So depreciation is definitely depreciation and amortization. The difference is amortization is for intangible assets like research and development, um, startup costs, um, trademarks, um, mm -hmm. patents, all of those type of things. Anything that you can't touch is amortized because it has a life value as well. And then depreciation, there's life value for the different types of assets. So what can you deduct from those two? Let's say re research and development, uh, those types of things. So from a research and development, depending on your cost, so it's always good to set a, a threshold on what you will consider an asset versus what you will expense so that there's consistency in your books. So I normally work with small business owners that have lower budgets. So I use a thousand dollars as an asset threshold. So if they spend a thousand dollars, let's say on a computer, that's an asset. Whereas if they pay $600, they just expense it. Right. So it depends on, um, the items, but I always say set a protocol for your business, not just in, not only because of audit, but also for your own consistency in your business to say what is considered an asset and what is not. Um, the main things that you want to pay attention to are those items that could be sold for cash. Right. So an asset are items that can be converted quickly to cash. So if you think about it, your bank account is cash. Right. You think about inventory. You could sell your inventory for cash. If you have a building or a vehicle, those type of physical assets, you could sell those for cash. Right. So you have to look at an asset as something that could be for cash. When you're looking at research and development, it's amortized because you don't really have. Um, a cash value to it, but it is a value for the business to know what works, what don't work, what are good items to um, to invest in for your business, what are not. So research and development is definitely something that can be an asset, but it can also be expense depending on what the cost is. What if you have a business and you realize, wow, you know what? I'm not... Uh... I'm not doing as well as I think I should be. And you decide to do some marketing for your business. Can that be used as a business expense? Definitely can. So there's a difference between advertising and marketing. Okay. So advertising. Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> They're both expenses. Okay. okay. You can write off both, but how do you kind of classify or di differentiate between the two is advertising is like a promotion. 
is for a limited time, is for a period of time. Right. Where marketing can be used for years. So you look at marketing like branding. Yep. My logo that you see up top. That's yep. marketing. I can use it over and over and over. Sure. Right. Whereas advertising is almost like a one-time thing. It's for a period of time. You're promoting either a sale and that, you know, something sure. that you have um, some services, some bundles, things like that. So that's gotcha. the biggest difference. If it is marketing, um, let's say you did some marketing videos to explain what your company does and you're going to put them on social and uh, yeah, well, need a new logo, whatever that might be. How much of that can you deduct? 100%. Really? <laughs> yes. So that actually leads into um, the other topic. I wrote it down. I want to talk about professional fees because that's another item that people forget about. Um, I think last week we had talked about subscriptions, but professional fees, you know, I always say be good at what you're good at. No one is perfect. So therefore you cannot do everything, you know, be a genius in your own lane and acquire help where you're not good at. So things like marketing, I am not a marketer. I'm a, a finance person all the way around, right? I know how to do marketing, but that's not my forte, right? So I always outsource that task to somebody that's better at it, that loves to do that, whether sure. it's social media, whether it's branding, like my logo, I didn't create these things. You know, I put it to somebody that is good at, but people forget about those type of expenses that you can write it off. And now is a good time to really look at your, um, your expenses, your income and expenses, your profitability, because we have one more quarter, Q4, to make any changes toward this 2024 tax year. So now's the time to start looking at your, your record. You need to look at them every month, but if you haven't looked at them all year, you really need to look at it now. Talk to a professional now to see what strategies you could put in place before the end of the year. Well, wow, I'm intrigued. I never heard that you could deduct for branding or marketing your company. Um, yeah. What about if I'm going to go, I'm going to jump down the rabbit hole for a moment. What about if you're doing Google advertising? Now I said the word advertising, I'm sorry. Um, you're just making people, you're aware that if you have professional services. You're not advertising, you know, 50% off of my services. Right. Does that come under the category of marketing? I would not categorize that as marketing. That's advertising because it's, it's considered ongoing. Marketing is more or less like a brand. If you think of it that way, what are you putting your nice. brand on? How will your brand be recognized? So cups, mugs, you know, backpacks. Promotional like items. That. Yes. Those okay. are like marketing materials because they can be seen everywhere. And, and I would think the video, a branding video, you know, the expenses involved in that, you're not advertising, you are, that could go on your branding. website. Um, what about your website? Can that be deducted because that's part of your branding? Very much so. As well as the upkeep. So, you know, it, it costs to have a website, not only to build one, sure. but also to have it hosted. So that's the recurring uh, monthly fee that you normally will have. So you look at it that way as well. Advertising you're continually paying for. Marketing is almost like an expense that's paid for, but then you could use it over and over. Right, and over. Like a one-time right. cost. Your website, yeah. you know, let's say you redo it every, I don't know, four or five years, whatever it might be. Um, that's a hard one-time cost. Same, but the hosting... That is it's recurring, yeah, it, reoccurring, right? And that could be monthly if you want to pay it that way, or yearly. Right. Uh, interesting, interesting. All right, uh, deductions. What else do we have? What else don't we have? So <laughs> <laughs> I'm People, learning a lot here already. Right, exactly. So travel is a big one. Um, people get confused on what they can and cannot uh, deduct for travel. Mm. Okay, um, and how to treat a a travel event that's combined right part of it is business part of it is personal right so you may want to may go on a business trip you've never been there before and you want to stay a couple of extra days because you've never been there before you want to sightsee or something so that's a separation you would not 
expense 100% of travel if some of those days are for personal. So tracking and keeping track of things is extremely important. One thing that I always talk about is don't co-mingle your business and personal expenses. So one way to keep that straight in that same travel is to pay for the things that's business with your business card, because I never advise to use cash for any purchases for your business, any expenses, unless you have to, like in the case of cannabis. But um, if at all possible, always use a card. It could be a debit card, so it comes straight out your bank account, or a business credit card. But when you do your personal activities, do not pay for it with the business card. Pay for it with your personal card. Just the same as like your hotel stay, for example, the business days should be paid for on your business card and your personal days should be paid for on your personal card. So let's say that you have a business card and you put some of your personal expenses on there. Maybe you. Oh, mingle. <laughs> you, you didn't have <laughs> coming up with a hypothetical here. You didn't have your personal card available. Maybe you hit the limit on that. Or maybe you weren't 100 percent sure if what you were putting on your uh, business card uh, was business or not. Maybe it was personal. You're not sure. What's the harm in that if you have a bookkeeper reconciling where it should go? So the bookkeeper will have to know that part of that expense was personal. Sure. Sure. Um, because how you would code that is to say how much of this expense was business coded to where it sure. goes. And then you put it as either owner draw, depending on your business structure. It could be an owner's draw, a shareholder distribution, a dividend, you know, things like that. Um, but it is it does matter in the bookkeeping side of things, because if they don't know, they won't code it that way. So it's best not to code mingle them. But to answer your question, what harm is if you're audited and the auditors find that kind of error, not only will they dive deeper into your books to see how much more you've done like that, because their job is really to see if you deducted appropriately the amounts that you indicate on your tax return, if if these deductions are valid, right? So as long as they're valid, you're good. But if they find an error like that, um, where it's not differentiated, that this was personal, right? Um, they, that's cause for additional sampling, which that's a deeper dive into your stuff. Gotcha. So if you were to do it, use your use your uh, business card for personal use, as long as the bookkeeper codes it properly, puts it where it needs to go, you're okay. It's not like you know the IRS is going to repel from the ceiling and I got you now. Um, no, yeah. <laughs> they will not. So it's really um, it's also for your benefit to know exactly what's going on in your business. So if it's miscoded, you're making decisions with incorrect information. A perfect example. Let's say that um, part of that expense, let's say it's meals, for example, and I allocate in the budget that I only want to spend um, 3% or of, of revenues on um, meals or entertainment or things like that. If I'm looking at my account or my financial statements and that percentage is five, I'll cut back on meals thinking that I've already over or exceeded my budget when in fact I had not. It was miscoded. So it's, it's very important to have your bookkeeping correct because you make decisions in your business based on what you see in your business. Gotcha. Well, we're seriously learning a lot here. Uh, and it just it shows how run you how deep you run in terms of what you offer within your company. You know, some people yeah. just do bookkeeping. Some people just do accounting. Some uh, have a hybrid of both. But you also have an eye on the tax side and and more business consulting and all of that. Got a, a literally two minutes. Any other deductions you want to hit up that we could uh, talk about? Um. Anything you do with me is a deduction, right? <laughs> so everything that we offer is a deduction because it's done for you services or it's coaching. So we do business coaching 
And, and that's what actually differentiates us from other accounting firms, because we don't just do the work, we explain it to you so that you can make those sound financial decisions, so that you can know exactly what's going on in your taxes and you don't leave money on the table. So things like that, knowing where your money is and how it's being spent is crucial in it. And that could be an expense that you could deduct depending on what you do. So trainings are a deduction. Um, if they cost to listen to you, this is a deduction because you're learning. And people don't wow. think about the subscriptions. But yeah, if it costs to subscribe to this podcast, it's a business podcast. So you get to write that off. You're learning. Well, that I always remember that was a classic one, even back in the day when magazines were a thing where yep. you could write off magazine subscriptions. Correct. To a certain point, though, it's not 100 percent. Or is it? It is. Oh, okay. it is. So like, you know, at the doc doctor's office, you always see that they have magazines in their waiting room, right? Yeah. They yeah. write that off. They get to write that off. Mm. So um, any subscriptions that you have is a write off. Any So if you look at it from a standpoint of, is this for me or for my business? As long as it's for your business, you get to deduct it and you could justify it. Because the thing about it is I'm a firm believer is there's no two businesses alike because what I will deduct may not be deductible to you depending on what we do, right? So another deduction that um, people forget about or think they can deduct and they can't depending on their industry is grooming. Like they're getting their hair done or their nails done, you know, things like that. You cannot deduct that as just a regular expense or your dry cleaning. You cannot deduct that. Unless it has a logo or it's branded, your dry cleaning is your personal expense, right? Mm -hmm. So it's things like that. It depends on your business and how you run your business. So um, like with the example of the hair and nails, my normal maintenance of myself is not deductible. But when I'm going for a speaking engagement on stage, that is deductible mm. because it's presentation. Yeah, well, you know, go get your nails done. It's on. It's on. It's on the government. Uh, like your, your hair looks great, but you know what? You got to have it ready for a podcast as part of your business. Yes, uh, yeah. exactly, exactly. So people think forget about that. So podcast people, I actually had um, a conversation with a, a podcast person, and she's like, "Oh, I didn't know I could deduct that." Yes, you can because your face is your brand, and you're presenting. This is your business, so you have to look presentable. But if I'm not doing a podcast, I just can't deduct that, you know? So it wow. is strategic. Well, have you know, I I, I don't do any Botox. <laughs> you make it. Making an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> no need. You look fabulous. <laughs> How do we find you, Tracy? How do we connect with you? The best way to reach me is on the website, tljprofessionalservices.com. Um, there are several links uh, where, depending on the appointment you want to have, you could book that appointment. So from the tax prep to a bookkeeping discovery call or I'm coaching. So all of those are on the site, including uh, the life insurance side of things. Like I said, I don't promote too much that side of my business because I add that as an additional knowledge I have for my clients. Um, I don't push the insurance side of things though. Gotcha. Uh, learned so much today. Amazing. Amazing. You, you really, really have your finger on the pulse of all of this. And uh, for that, I thank you and looking forward next time we talk. Yes, yes. Thank appreciate you so it. much for having me, Steve. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on streama.com and onlineradiobox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. 
when I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.